What else can you do other than EQ to remove kick and uh, snare out of a sample? Uh, fine, all I'm doing is cutting out the low end and the mids. All right. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. We on the YouTubes too? We are on the YouTubes. Now I just gotta do three other things. Damn. <laughs> uh, best software for chopping and rearranging them. Serato. Facts. Serato sample. Facts. I Next agree. question for yeah. knocking them out the park today. Serato is like one, two, and three. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. that's a fact. And I'm an Ableton user. I love mm -hmm. everything in Ableton. I love drum racks and the slicing and all that. But when it comes to that, Serato. Is it worth paying for an internship or apprenticeship program at a studio if you're trying to come in the door as a producer? Uh, I would say it depends on your strategy. Yeah. It depends on what studio it is. Like, what's the track record of the studio? That's what I was going to say. The yeah. studio is important. But what, paying for an internship? Yeah. I've yeah. never heard of that. Yeah, I've never heard. I've heard of a paid internship where mm -hmm. they pay you. But for the most part, an internship is where you do mm -hmm. stuff for free. Right. I've never heard of you paying to go work. To do stuff for yeah. free. For not. Yeah. yeah. If you got to pay, I would pay for, like, mentorships. I would pay for, like... If they got events like if those I standards or whatever, I would pay for those. But right. if to work in an actual studio, oh no, it's like a paid collab. Yeah, it's yeah, terrible. I'm not doing that. Yeah, I'm not doing that. What is the best way to advertise my sound on IG? Be consistent, man. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, it's the, always the hashtag game and, and, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Use proper hashtags and one thing I've learned, like coming up. Over IG, it's probably been like what six years now. What's some? Yeah. I always say six years. I feel like I've been saying six years for eight years. <laughs> but um, you've been turning twenty one for five basically. Years. But it's just the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Just whatever you've learned about it, just apply those consistently, and mm -hmm. it really is what it is. It's like no, it's not a whole bunch of like secrets and right. tricks and and shortcuts. It's consistency. Seeing what people like and doing more yeah. of that. Yo, they say opioid, the opioid epidemic is a problem in hip hop. The shortcuts are a problem. Oh, the, yeah. Shortcuts are the opioid epidemic uh, of facts. the producer community. That's super fast. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm going to save shortcuts probably till later on. What is one thing you see most producers aren't doing that they need to do to expand their brand? Well, I'll just start going off the top as you ponder the deep answer. Um, when, when it comes to expansion, expansion is... Expansion and scaling, to me, are kind of the same thing. You can't really scale by yourself. Mm -hmm. So collaborating would be one. Mm -hmm. If you really want to expand your brand, and it might sound counterintuitive because it's your brand, but collaborating or at least building a team right. will help you out tremendously. And um, a lot of us don't want to do that, man. Right. Because the way I see it, like... If you ask somebody like where they see themselves in five years or when they accomplish whatever they want to accomplish, the picture they see in their mind is just them. Right. Like, I made it. I got platinum albums. Mm -hmm. I did this for that person. The picture in their mind, they're probably never, never with a group of people. Right. It's just them. And I guarantee you, if that's the route that you want to take, that picture in your mind will never happen. Mm -hmm. Because it'll never be just you if right. you want to accomplish all these grand things. So, I mean, get with the team, man. You know, expand to expand. Right. And I'd say, one, I think is knowing your target audience, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like producers, I mean, it, to a certain extent, we want to impress other producers. They're our peers. We want to look cool. But at the end of the day, bro, it don't matter what other producers think. It's the people who buy these records or the rappers or whoever is the end consumer. So I feel like people need to understand that producers aren't my target people. I need to make stuff for the artist, the end consumer. I need to sell songs rather than selling beats. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And I think that's what separates people who get more placements and you know and and work more than the people who just kind of do it as a hobby. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of people also chasing the recognition, like the likes, yeah, the, just the being seen, but and they that equate that way. to success. That's not dollars. That's like uh, the Instagram girl selling the flat tummy tea. But it's like, you know, like, is that really adding to what you're doing right now, Ma? It's not at all. It's a means to an end, but is it really a means to an end? You know what I'm saying, Ma? You better than that. You know what I mean? Good use of the word Ma, by the <laughs> way. Yo, Ma? Made it sound official. <laughs> Yo, Ma? But, no, but but for real, like, yeah, you're right. Producers spend so much time trying to impress their peers because it's it's easier to do. and But that 
that's not your audience. You're right. Producers aren't buying beats mm-hmm. from producers. So, get with some artists. You know what's crazy? Producers try to impress and give quality stuff to their peers, but then they just push beats on artists. Yeah. They're just like, hey, buy my beats, yeah. artists, buy my beats. By the way, producers, check exactly. me out. Like, a, you know, you kind of like cater to right. and coddle other producers and then you just dump on artists. In your professional opinion, is it necessary to have a laptop with a plethora? I like the, he, he used that word, yeah. and I read that correctly. He knows of, what he's doing. Too. Right, of plugins, or is it minimal enough? Definitely minimal. Coming from a point of having all the plugins in the world and only using five to having five right. plugins and using them all, mm-hmm. you want to be minimal and and treat your hardware good. You don't want to have a hardware that's bloated. Just bloated with plugins that never get right. used, just taking up space and nah. Minimal is always better, you know. You want to you want to scale down, keep it slim. Mm-hmm. Keep master it slim. of a uh, few. You know what I mean, master those couple things you got. And, there you go. You know what I mean. What else can you do other than EQ to remove kick and uh, snare out of a sample? Uh, find all I'm doing is cutting out the low end and the mids. That's really it, man. I, I I'll be honest with you. There's probably some things that you can do, like you could do like some phase shifting and, and all that stuff. But keeping it real, the sample is what the sample is. Mm. You know? Don't don't become like a like a girlfriend that gets with a guy and tries to change everything about him. Mm. Like, no. Nah, you gotta like what you started with. What is your opinion on putting beats on a streaming platform? Are they beats to sell or are they beats like an instrumental album? I would do instrumental albums. Encourage people to sample mm-hmm. and charge uh, sample fees mm-hmm. or whatever. That's right. Listen, man, the floodgates are open. It's no more gatekeepers because there's no more gates. Mm-hmm. You can do whatever the hell you want. Facts. So why aren't you? Is the real question. I encourage everybody this weekend to think about all the things that you want to do. And before you start doing them, answer the question, why, have, why aren't you doing them? Ooh. Ooh. Everybody had these ideas forever. I want to do this and I want to do that. Mm-hmm. So why haven't you started? Because once you know the answer to that, you'll be able to fix the problem. Right. So now you'll be able to pursue all your other endeavors right. that you want to do. You know, I don't want to get to my Oracle bag. This is when I get into get my Oracle bag. The snapping Oracle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, that's uh, the thing. Ghost to beat says instrumentals and also beats. So if it's beats for rappers to try to buy, I would not put them on Spotify. Title iTunes. No one that's buys not for that. Yeah, yeah, that's not for that. They're free. If you're putting out beats for people to vibe to, listen to, and like a, you know, like they're catered to instrumental, like the selection type vibe, or like a just beats that's made for vibing to, yeah. then that's cool. Do your thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, if you're trying to sell stuff, and you know, no, you can't. Yeah. Don't sell beats on a free streaming platform. Yeah, you'll that. be frustrated. Enjoy yourselves. Be great, guys. Put out some content, man. Y'all make some. Yes, put it sir. out there. You know what I mean? Do y'all thug thizzle, man. Millie Rock on every block. Hey, man. And once Not again, listen. Think about all the things you want to do. Think about all the things you've always been wanting to do. And before you start them, think about why you have not started them. Facts. That answer will help you with a lot in life. Facts. Yeah. All right, guys. Appreciate y'all. We out here, man. It's real. Yeah. We need like a sign-off tagline. And... See. <laughs>